Sorry, man. It worked this time. We got the intro and everything. Again, no one's going to get it except for me, and that's okay. All right. <laughs> Fade out, but that's okay. You didn't rehearse. Um, so I did a big year last year, um, North Carolina, uh, with all the pandemic craziness going on. I had some trips that got canceled and moving closer to the screen, and we're good. All right, so I had some trips that got canceled. Uh, I wound up having like six weeks of PTO going into 2021. Um, and I needed to do something. And uh, started planning another trip. Uh, got, uh, you know, COVID started spiking again. And it just all went to heck. So this is what I did instead. You can go ahead and move to the next slide here. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna throw some statistics at you. Hopefully try and get most of the numbers and stuff out of the way first, and we'll kind of move on from there. Um, 40,000 miles-ish is an estimate. I, if I were more organized, I'd have a better idea of how much I actually drove. But uh, rough math, I think that translates into like seven to 800 hours in the car, um, which is pretty ridiculous when you say that out loud. Uh, but I got... 600, 363 ferrets last year. Um, it was a real blast. Um, I, my trip, my, my path into this level of obsessive birding was, was exponential. So I, I started a long time ago, I think like 2012, I started a list. Um, and then, you know, really, really slow path up to like maybe three, four years ago, all of a sudden I discover eBird and eBird rare bird alerts. And then I start chasing stuff. And then, you know, next thing you know, I'm doing a big year, it's crazy. So I got all these, a lot of these birds that I saw this last year um, were new to me, which was really awesome. Um, so I had 92 birds that I saw that I'd never seen in North Carolina before. Uh, what's that? 56 birds that I'd never seen at all. Genuine lifers, like primo stuff, right? Um, some other statistics there. Uh, we'll talk about Taco Bell a little bit more later. Um, it's very important uh, to the discussion. I don't want to belabor the point right now. Um, 26 trips down to the Outer Banks. That's why I had the 40,000 plus miles. It's a long way to the Outer Banks, but that's where a lot of the rare birds show up. So uh, you got to do what you got to do. I like one of the favorite silly expressions is birds aren't going to watch themselves somebody's <laughs> got to do it um 20 days for storing the petrol uh from folks that don't know uh that's uh the pelagic trip out of hatteras that's really as far away as you can get from here and still be in north carolina very tip uh, of hatteras island southernmost tip um long long trip but loads of fun i think we've done several uh, meetings about pelagic trips in the last year, so I won't, I won't go too deep into that either. Um, law enforcement, we'll talk about later too. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so I, I crunch data for a living, so eBird is really awesome for that. So I could just pull all of my observations from eBird that I had last year and just do stuff with them. You don't have to go back. Um, so this right here on the x-axis, uh, these are, this is actually a bar chart with 363 bars. Uh, they're very small bars, but they're bars. Um, and it, it just the computer kind of randomly picked uh, what species it wanted to throw up. Um, but Carolina Wren takes the prize. 252 observations on my eBird list. Kind of makes sense, right? Carolina Wren. Uh, uh, Northern Cardinal was right behind it. It's like 249 or something. But I'm not, didn't even crack 50%, which I was kind of surprised about because you see those suckers everywhere. Um, 
honestly, if, if I did it again, so like, uh, as I mentioned, the, the, it's been a very steep ascent in my obsession. So I didn't, I'm a much better birder than I was at the beginning of last year. <laughs> so uh, it's the American goldfinch. I, over the course of the year, was able to figure, like hear them and uh, American goldfinch. And now it's like every time I walk out the door, I hear. So that that would probably be way higher if. Uh, but anyway, um, lots of interesting tidbits. You can go to the next slide. It's very similar to this one, except highlighting a different bird. And one of the funny uh, funny things in this these data is sooty shearwater, twenty two observations. That's not like a middle of the pack bird that most people see that frequently. Um, I looked up on eBird and I think it's on like 0.09% of checklists. So this is 36 times more frequently than normal people see these birds. Um, but it really speaks to how much I went out into the ocean and scooted around on the boat all day. Um, but you can go to the next one. Very much like this one, except with the surf scooter. Uh, one of the great things about doing a big year and just being out in the field so much. Um, I wasn't like the crazy intense birder before. Uh, and so I only had like little snapshots of the bigger picture of what was going on with migration, with different uh, you know, population dis densities of different birds. Gone to the Outer Banks in the winter time, maybe twice before my big year. And we saw lots of surf scoters on both of those trips. So, you know, small sample size really skewing my perception of the, the frequency of this bird in North Carolina. And four observations right there. I remember one of them. I think the other three might have been on Stormy Petrel, somebody else keeping the list and saw them fly by in the distance. I didn't even notice. But one more slide. Excellent. So you might have noticed that the, the three prior pictures were very good. Those are, that's not my style of photography at all. Uh, I'm not good at it. I don't enjoy it. Uh, if, if I see something rare, like this bar-tailed godwit, I will begrudgingly take a photograph. And this one's not that bad as far as my photographs go. We'll get, a we'll get some more of that later. But um, so this is all the way at the tail end of the distribution of uh, frequency. Um, this is one of... I think 67 birds that I only saw once all year. Um, so there are a couple like black billed cuckoo and gray cheek thrush, like just uncommon migrants that I just happened not to come across but didn't really look for. Pretty much all the rest of those were birds that I deliberately like chased. So somebody somewhere in the state saw this bird, put it on eBird, put it on a rare bird alert or something. And then I either ask my boss to let me go and leave work just on a moment's notice. And he's on here tonight, so everybody can thank him for, uh, for letting me go. Um, but I lost my train of thought, that's okay. Anyway, a uh, lot of sitting around wondering if a bird's gonna stick around long enough for me to go see it. Uh, so it's, it was, that was the most stressful part of the whole experience is just that tension there, the battling a migratory instinct versus me being able to leave work. <laughs> um, it was ridiculous. But anyway, we can go on. All right. So we're done with the numbers for a few minutes. Um, this is kind of more the, uh, the story, story of my big year. Everybody has a story. They're all pretty much the same, but uh, I'll tell you mine anyway. Uh, so I didn't think I was going to do a big year. Uh, uh, my mom just laughed. Uh, so a, a lot of you may notice the, uh, may be familiar with that little top 100, the eBird thing down at the bottom. Um, this, is, this is a leaderboard. My son's familiar with leaderboards. You know, the video games have leaderboards. So this is something that's very familiar and attractive to me. Um, as I mentioned, you know, this is one of those things that my, my level of involvement, my level of interest, like really took it off uh, when I discovered this and figured out I can compete with other people about seeing birds. 
Um, it's just very, very much in my nature. Um, so, you know, 2020 pandemic did a lot more birding than I had historically. Starting to meet all you fine folks. Uh, it seemed like every rare bird alert that popped up, it's just like all you guys showed up. It was awesome. I loved it. It was the most social thing I did all year, probably. Um, but you know that that got me out on these uh, on these mini pelagic trips out on Lake Norman with Jeff Lemons um, a lot, and started getting me like really in the mix with folks. Uh, folks were really obsessed as I have now become. Um, but the top 100 was always like, oh, all these good birders. I was kind of a newbie. Uh, was, there's no way I'm going to like really compete. But I, I hatched a plan to, uh, to kind of like get a sucker punch in. So the, the, these lists, the year, they have the all time list and the year list. And the year list, of course, reset at the beginning of the year. So my plan was to go out and just bird my butt off on January 1st, just like sneak one in. So I could just be at the top, just just one day. That's all I wanted. I was gonna I was gonna take a little screenshot and share it on Facebook. All all the cool birding people would think I'm so cool. Uh, that was my plan. Um, so going out the plan was I uh, got Jeff Turner. I roped Jeff Turner into going down to the Outer Banks. There's a snowy owl and uh, vermilion flycatcher. There's a bunch of stuff down there left over from the end of 2020. Um, <laughs> but uh, so we were going down there, but I, I'd already told Jeff I'd go out on the boat with him. Um, Greg Hayes happened to be out there at that time. He had done a big year for Mecklenburg County in 2020, and you know, a lot of talk was about you know, lists and counts and numbers and stuff. You know, it just gets my juices going. Uh, but so it, it was really getting me riled up. Um, at one point, I remember Jeff saying. Oh, so who, who do you think is going to do a 2021 big year? And he looks over at me, he says, Matt? Well, I, I literally laughed out loud, like totally. It was, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. No way. No way am I doing that. But directly after I got off that boat, I had a six-hour drive to the Outer Mix. And that's a lot of time for an idea like that to sit and, and kind of, yeah, 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 sit and cook, right? So that, that's the first time on the way down. I was like, what if, what if I did a big year? It was just a daydream at that point. It's still just a ridiculous idea. Um, but so we're on this mission to get number one for one day. We need to win January 1st. January 1st in the Outer Banks was disgusting. We got up at like five o'clock in the morning and it was just rainy and windy and cold and gross. And we just weren't finding all the birds I thought we were going to find. It's kind of discouraging. Um, Jeff had to go home and... I, I can't leave. I'm just not, I needed to find birds. I'm not finding birds. We need to stay. Uh, I need to stay. Um, so he ended up taking off. The night ended. Had uh, checked in the morning. Uh, Eber, these, these leaderboards, they have like a, uh, like a little delay. It's not instantaneous. Check in like every half hour. Or so every time I get in the car to go to a new spot, check, check to see if it's updated. Yet. Finally updated. 79. 79 birds, January 1st. That's, I thought I was going to get like 120 that first day. Um, I think Ricky Davis or something, he's another big beer fellow. He's always chasing stuff. Um, I think he had 80. So I was, we were number two. We were number two. And it's severe disappointment. Um, you know, this, what are you going to do? Try again next year, whatever. Um, so we get on another feature, eBird is you can go and you have like a target species list. So it's, it knows everything you've gotten already. And then you put in where you're at and it, it just generates a most likely list of birds that you still need to see based on what you've already seen. Um, and first two, first two things on there were American white pelican and red-throated loon. We'd seen American white pelican and red-throated loon on the first. And I just forgot to put them in the list. Oh, no. but uh, it didn't matter I wanted the screenshot with me in the first place that's that's what I wanted I'm still disappointed and it's like, oh, I'm only down one let's, let's just keep going try and get it today and uh turned into 365 days but <laughs> yeah just 
people kept on coming. You can go to the next slide. I, I don't remember what's next. Uh, this one. This can't really see the uh, the caption there, but it's a very cringeworthy hip hop reference. Um, this is kind of a throwaway slide. Uh, I don't take pictures of birds, but I take pictures of sunsets. So I want to throw them up there and have that corny thing. That's really all I have for this. I woke up early a lot. That was the, the theme of this slide. Uh, but you can go to the next one. Thanks. Okay, so eventually, like, things started getting sorted out, right? We have this list. Everybody knows where everybody's at. If you've seen, like, the, the big year movie, like, it's a big mystery. Like, they don't know who has what birds. Um, that was what you have to use to call a hotline. That's well before my days. Um, yeah, so this guy, Jamie Adams. No idea who he was. Saw him up there. I was, like, stalking this guy on eBird. It was... It was kind of weird, honestly, looking back at it, but I was obsessed. Um, so like I looked up on Facebook and he lives in Wilmington and he has this blog and I start reading his blog. It's like figuratively, this guy wrote the book on big year North Carolina birding. He's done like five of them. <laughs> he just does it every year. He just goes hard. And he writes about it in his blog. His blog's amazing. He's a really good photographer. This photo is his. Um, and we ended up just being really good friends. Uh, the first time I met him uh, was at Fort Fisher. Was trying to get blackheaded gull and couldn't find it. Went did something else. Got my shoes wet and I'm chronically unprepared, so I didn't have any other shoes. And it's freezing, so I take off the wet shoes and walk around barefoot. That was a bad idea too. So when I finally met him. I was coming back to my car. I was toes falling off and. Um, you know, just barely, it's a very quick interactions. What do you see? Avocet out on the rocks. Have you heard about the goals? Yes, they're there. And that was it. That was the first time we met. I was, sorry, my feet are freezing. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Um, but we ended up finally uh, meeting up on meeting up on the ship and uh, the, the boat out of Hatteras. And we ended up burning a lot together, which is awesome. Uh, you know, he really knew the big year game and I did not. Uh, so it's definitely a kind of a mentor situation and I really can't thank him enough for uh, all the just being nice. You know, you see the big year, the Bostic thing, um, like they're like, don't like each other. Or, like they're playing tricks and trying to, you know, shicey stuff to get ahead. And, you know, it was none of that. It was super friendly, super good sport. It was, it was awesome. And I had a much better time uh, having somebody else doing a big year with me at the same time. Um, so really shout out to Jamie. Uh, but he has this, the, the blog is down at the bottom there. Um, very much recommend catching up on his blog. Uh, we went to Antarctica in February. So it was a bunch, uh, I didn't take any pictures. So he, he has pictures of my Antarctica trip. Uh, you know, we went to Brazil and has a bunch of good pictures. But anyway, we can stop talking about them. All right. This is where a clicker would have come in handy. It's going to be a lot of clicking here. Next one. All right, so these are more of my photos. So the year, the distribution of when you get new year birds is obviously very heavily weighted towards the front of the year when you haven't seen anything yet. So they were coming really fast um, and it was awesome. It was just every day going out and I was getting new birds out of my window um, at work. Yeah, you know, it was crazy. Um, so this is uh, more of my handiwork, obviously. Uh, this is a long-billed curlew. You can tell, kind of, you can see the bill. It's a big short bird, long built, long built curly. Let's go to the next one. Can anybody have any idea? Just shout it out. There you go. Very good. This is an eared grebe. I don't, I don't know if anybody would be, I don't know why I uploaded it to eBird, but I did. Uh, I'm not sure we got approved. I don't, I don't check up on those things. Um, but anyway, you can go to the next one. These are birds, maybe, trash, I don't know. <laughs> um, so these are uh, common mergansers. Uh, I'll complain about uh, nameology. My, my words are failing me up here, but I'll complain about that a little later. Actually, this next one, I think. Go ahead, put the next one up. All right, common red poles. So that's two <laughs> rare common species in a row. And this drives me absolutely crazy. I had to go, I spent maybe 16 hours looking for this red pole, like outside of somebody's house. <laughs> uh, 
So I went, I, I took, I uh, went up after work one night. I went up, I took like a half day the next day because people had seen it in the morning. I just couldn't find this bird and the people were nice as could be. And it's just this weird guy sitting out. It's just not leaving. I don't know. <laughs> he really wants to see this bird. And uh, finally, finally did get it. It was like one of these morning things. It came there first thing in the morning and then took off, did something else. Um, finally got it. Got a fabulous picture. He's like 20 feet away. Like a, a child with a flip phone could probably take a better picture of that bird. Um, I just remember going back to my boss and, by the way, what, what bird were you looking for? And common red poles. Common red pole. Just drives me crazy and they should change all of them. But anyway, go ahead. On to the next one. So this is my favorite of these photos. I saw this in my, you know, scrolling through, just trying to find photos, throwing this slide. Um, I thought turtle too. I, was, I don't think I'd take a picture of the turtle. Um, yeah, so I had to go in my eBird list, find like the date that I took this, this photo, going, what bird did I see? This is a king eider. Um, that was top of everybody's guest list, right? Oh, well. This is on eBird too. Five stars, please. All right. So we, we got a break from the map. You know, people uh, don't want to take all that at once. Start zoning out. So this is a, this is a pretty cool chart. I like this one a lot. On the x-axis, we've got uh, just the dates. Uh, it's just a time series. Cumulative uh, species count on the y-axis. So you can see first day, so many birds. And it just kept up that pace, you know, a little less than that pace, for a good month. And, you know, dies off a little bit. And then you have spring migration, which is obviously awesome. You get a bunch of new stuff coming in. And then you get to the summer. It's, it's a grind after that. Um, yeah, especially at, at, I think in like August or something, I went on a weekend trip. I got five birds. And I, I just knew in my gut that's that's the end of that. <laughs> so I think the most I had in a in a weekend or, or, or trip was two. After that, and it was mostly just one offs. You know, going out for a weekend, not seeing anything. Um, and by the time you get to uh, December. I think I have one bird in December. Um, and I took a week and a half off work uh, at the end of the year to try and like to try and go. Um, well, I'll complain more about that later too. Uh, you can throw up another slide. I told you we we're going to talk more about Taco Bell. Uh, and I, I'm not disappointing. So there's an obvious trend here. Uh, these are very correlated variables. Um, the amount of Taco Bell I consumed was, I mean, it lines up almost perfectly. Ignore the fact that the, the axis is, <laughs> is what? There's some creative manipulation here, but somebody should check into it. Um, let's go on. All right, I mentioned that, uh, that the fall was tough. Once it gets into that grind, this was the only period that I was like seriously stressed out, like almost to a level of unhappiness. Um, and it was, you can tell because of the, the Taco Bell, the, the, the comfort food shot up right there, right? Uh, but uh, so there, were, there were two things that happened right around this period, both kind of funny. First one was my first concept of, of losing a bird. I, I'd, I'd gone and I'd, dipped on, on birds, you know, the, the rare bird flew away or something. But this was the first time that I missed a bird that comes through North Carolina every year, the yellow-bellied flycatcher. Um, uh, additionally, during this period, uh, we had gone out and we'd seen Philadelphia Vireo. I was with a group of people at Bromley and flags is rare. Kent's the eBird reviewer up there. And if any of you know, I'm, I'm sure if you ever put uh, a rare bird and don't give a satisfactory factory description, you get an email from him, um, which is great. Uh, keeps keeps us honest, uh, to some degree at least. Uh, but we we were with a group, and somebody somebody had posted a picture of the bird, and it was a Tennessee warbler. And he sends me this picture of this Tennessee warbler. He says, hey, you were with this group, weren't you? Because I ran into him in the field. Um, yeah, it's a Tennessee warbler. 
I sure thought it was a Philadelphia Fury when I was looking at it. We had five people looking at this bird real, real close. And it, it, it hit me hard. Like, what am I doing? Like, I'm, how can I make this kind of mistake? Uh, everybody was looking at this bird. Everybody was sure it was a Philadelphia Vireo, but we have a picture of this bird and it's obviously a Tennessee warbler. Um, so I, I uh, was very concerned about my years, super stressing out. I was like, what am I doing? How can I trust anything I've seen? I'm not taking any pictures. I hate doing that. Uh, so like, you know, how can I trust myself that I'm actually seeing these birds? Um, so then we had to do a little investigation. Uh, turns out it was not the bird we saw, thank goodness. Uh, so that was, that was a big relief. So we were able to keep the big year going. Um, but that, that was a, a stressful period or just, it's tough, it was tough. There, there's some big, tough stretches in, in most big years people have talked to. Um, but, so that was mine. Everything else is happy, happy dory or lucky dory or whatever the saying is. You can go to the next slide. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. So law enforcement, they're great. Um, so birders under normal circumstances can look a bit out of place. Um, birders in extreme circumstances can look really out of place. So I had like four, four instances where, where I had folks so were really suspicious coming up. Um, the first one was actually not here. Is that Oregon Inlet? There was a harlequin duck that had been spotted like right smack in the middle where they were still taking apart the old bridge. And they get those there usually every year, um, but you know, only like one. And this sucker was all the way out in the middle. Um, and my scope, I could, I just sat there for like an hour, like you know, cormorant, cormorant, cormorant. You know, there's thousands of those guys out there. Um, finally, I thought I got on it, but it was just too far to like to really make that call. I heard people on the, the rare bird alert talking about hopping out the car real quick, just peeking over and, uh, and driving off. And there's if you've been over that bridge, there's a good shoulder on that bridge. So I, I don't believe I was doing anything unsafe. But um, I had, I'm just now realizing this is a second story I'm about to tell where I wasn't wearing shoes when I should have been. Um, but I wasn't wearing shoes because uh, I got stuck in the mud and I, there were new shoes. So I didn't want to get the muddy. So I took them off. Um, and my feet were like covered in mud and I'm sitting there staring over the bridge. And a couple of people like stop and like, hey, you okay? I was like, yeah, fine. <laughs> Looking for birds. Hey, hey I drive off. Anyway, I, I leave. I didn't see the bird. Um, but I'm going out, uh, walking the jetty and walking back. And there's a, a ranger coming out. I don't think anything of it. I'm just you know, scooting along, minding my own business. Um, guys, like, are you Matthew Withrow? Uh, yeah. And turns out, they thought I was going to jump off the bridge. I don't know why, right? <laughs> why they thought I'd do that? <laughs> like I was having having a good time. Like I was like, oh, <laughs> yes. smile on my face as big as you can see. Um, yeah, I thought I was going to jump off the bridge. Called the police. When we got back to the little, uh, parking lot, there were like six uh, cop cars like sitting there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, thankfully, I got up with the warning on that one. Um, this this one's pretty funny too. So this one is another one. Somebody called the police. They said an old woman is walking down the causeway at Cedar Islands with a broken down car in the middle. This is the middle of the night. So this is looking for black rail, um, which looking for black rail, that's not the right way to say it. Listening for black rail. This was the second night that I'd spent. You, you, the way you get black rail in North Carolina, you either go out with a bunch of people and flush it up. Um, like during the winter, or you go out to this causeway in the middle of the night and just walk back and forth, hoping that you hear one. Um, and the mosquitoes could carry you away. I, there are mosquitoes out there. I, they're the, as big as I've ever seen. It was terrifying. Um, so I had a, uh, a mosquito net. I had a mosquito net. My, my generous father lent me for this exact occasion. I don't know. I guess it made me look like a woman. Um, 
but it was dark. It was dark too. Um, anyways, they, they come up and this, I just thought I heard. heard. Uh, so they come up and they're doing their sirens. And they're like, whoop, whoop. Um, and they get out. They were super confused. Like, what are you doing? Um, and, you know, I told them what I was doing. I showed them my eBird checklist. It's got 10 Virginia rails on there. Is there common as dirt out, out there? But uh, yeah, I just talked to them for about 20 minutes. And then uh, finally, we go. No citations again. Maybe ran my license and all that business. Um, but uh, there was one out there when they pulled up because it started right when they pulled off almost. And uh, I have a recording, but if I played it, nobody would be able to have like some some nice headphones, crank the volume all the way up. Kind of here. <laughs> it's a very unsatisfactory burning experience. I wouldn't recommend unless you're crazy. <laughs> Go ahead and the next one. All right. So these these were my megas. Uh, these were these were the big uh, state. I think the only two state first birds uh, we had um, over the year. So the one on the left is a thick billed long spur. Um, and that was, I, I would have called it a lap ones if it was me. It initially got reported as a lap ones. Um, yeah, that was life for me. I'll take it. Um, that was a great one too. So Martina was sitting there, got out of the car and you know, just talking about walking up and down a street, getting tore up by mosquitoes in the middle of the night, grass. Um, this one, Martina was just sitting there filming it. Rotary really walked up, set a little tripod, 30 seconds after I got out of the car. You need those every once in a while when you're doing a big year. It feels good. A little unsatisfying sometimes, but it's take what you can get. Um, this other one was a product of doing an outrageous number of uh, pelagic trips. This is the wedge tail shear water that I was lucky enough to get out for. And that was fantastic. Um, I'd never even heard of this bird before. And I'd, I'd been studying a ton for this for this big year and here Brian if anybody knows Brian he's the captain of the ship um he pops out the window knows what it is immediately and starts yelling you know, expletives are flying back and forth like yeah, get on the damn bird <laughs> it was it was awesome it was the most excited I've seen any birders ever was was at that moment um for that bird so that was that was really really awesome um, you can go to the next slide. It's almost exactly the same as this one. You did change it. <laughs> I got into painting recently. Uh, and I just wanted to, I'm very proud of this painting of this bird. Uh, that's how exciting it was. It's like, all right, I need to paint the bird. I need to paint. So you can go to the next one. That's, that's really all that slide was. I did. I got it. Yeah, it took, took me a long, long time. <laughs> um, but I got it done. Um, that's going to be my alternate for photography. I'm just going to paint everything. Be fine. Yeah. Um, all right, beggars can't be choosy. So these were like the ones that got away, right? I told, I mentioned I yellow belly fly catcher, you know, darn sucker. Um, this is that that was the the first real pain, and it still makes me upset just talking about it almost. Um, I was at Bromley for days trying to find this bird. Everybody and their mother was reporting yellow bellied flycatcher from Brumley. And I was there not seeing any yellow bellied flycatchers. And I'd, I'd been birding with Tom Driscoll uh, up there before. He was showing me around, helping me out. Um, that might actually be when the uh, uh, Philadelphia Vireo incident happened. But anyway, this was on the way back uh, from the Outer Banks. God, I don't want to bug. I don't want to bug Tom again. Like, I, I don't want to feel like I'm imposing. It's like, take me birding and fire birds. birds. I need them. Um, so I didn't, I didn't hit him up. I'm just walking around, not seeing any yellow bellied flycatchers at, at Bromley. And you know, what do I get on my phone? It's an alert that Tom and a couple other people had gone to Bromley South. I was at Bromley North and we're looking at a yellow bellied flycatcher. So I get him on the phone. It's, All right. Um, go down to Bromley South. What happens? The lady that I had just been talking to at Bromley North, get on my phone. Yellow belly flycatcher. 
man, that was that was the most like in your face uh, diss that I got from a bird all year. I had a couple others. Uh, the others are all my fault. Uh, overslept for morning warbler. Gave up too early on ash throat. That was all. There was an ash throat bycatcher all over the place, at least according to the reports. Um, with that McGivelries that was there at the beginning. It was one of those leftovers we talked about earlier. Um, and I went there five, six times, just didn't see us. I'll get it in December. Um, yellow headed blackbird, heard a lot. That was one where I was just sitting at work thinking it was going to stick around. And twice I drove down to the Outer Banks and it had been there the day before as reliable as could be. And not when I got there though. Um, Lapland Longsburg, kind of the same thing. Uh, I was just, I was lazy. It was the end of the year. I was, uh, we'll see if it sticks around. And it did stick around for that next day. So then the next three days I spent looking for it were kind of a, kind of a waste. Um, kind of got to shoot your shot though. Um, then we've gotten Allen's. This, this one was pretty frustrating. We had this um, in Charlotte, like a couple of miles from my house and just wasn't wasn't one of those chaseable birds just sitting there looking at it on the screen it's such a bummer then the big one is up one more slide this is one i promised around to talk about snow yeah so this is my picture I, so I, I finally got on this bird in february of this year but i mentioned january 1st we went down we were hoping to see snow yeah the weather was nasty we missed it um so i, I took last week and a half of the year and i guess it was just a week i went down after anyway uh i think it's a little exaggeration it's not too bad right um so went down spent three weeks looking for this bird um and really all it is they they hang out in the dunes down on the outer banks and there's been, been not really any reports or anything about it i was just walking up and down the dunes all week long, just walking up and down the dunes, not seeing any other birds, tons of goals and stuff, um, but no snowy owls. So that was a real bummer. But it turns out they they had been seeing it. Uh, somebody had been seeing it, but they weren't. They're they're really sensitive about the snowy owls down there, like a lot of the locals. So they don't like broadcast the information. Which I'm very spoiled. I grew up in the eBird, rare bird alert days, where I get all the information right away. So. It's, it's a change. It's a change not knowing about that. So it was real frustrating just being right in that area and, and, and missing it. Um, but it is what it is. I got it. That's you can't all go perfectly, right? It's fun to complain about stuff. You can go to the next one. All right. So this is the big mushy part that everybody in the big year does. So it's not about the birds. It's a little bit about the birds. But you know, the, the most memorable thing about the whole experience is the community and especially doing it in North Carolina rather than doing, well, everybody thinks their big year is the best, uh, but rather than doing like an ABA big year or something, is that you keep running into the same people over and over again. So you get to know folks uh, a bit better. You know, I, I met so many awesome people and this community is so great. I'm so thankful for it. Um, it's just amazing. You know, there's a point in my 20s where it just felt like I couldn't make friends with is just hard. I know a lot of people these days do that. Social media, it's crazy. Um, but this community has just totally changed my mind on that. Um, I've made so many new friends. I've met so many new people. And I'm just very, uh, very pleased and happy about that. Oh, this I did want to draw attention to. It's just because I thought it was cool. In this picture right here, we went out on the boat once. And uh, there were just water spouts all over the place. And this is the picture I got. It's just all of a sudden, uh, Brian just put the pedal to the metal on the boat, just kind of jolted us all back. So what's going on? Sometimes he'll see a bird from a mile out or something and do that. So have you seen something out there? And we look up and this, this funnel is just forming right on top of us. So it was really cool. But anyway, that's all there is there. You got the next one. All right. Can't remember what that says. But let's move to the next slide. All right, this is where I think other people. Um, so yeah, I had a lot of support from my friends. Um, some of them are here tonight. Some of them are tuning in. Um, 
I completely ignored them for most of the year last year. <laughs> and they were cool with it, which is great. Um, because now we're getting back to normal, getting back to the swing of things. But I really appreciate it. I have not, I have great non-birding friends too. I, I don't want to leave you guys out of this thing. Um, let's go on. All right. That's my cousin Tim. He let me crash on his couch like probably 20 times. It was great because all the rest of the nights I was in the car and that was terrible. Uh, so he lives in Chapel Hill. So it made it, it was a really convenient stopover. And he's awesome. And I really appreciate that free place to stay and getting. <laughs> Uh, I know it was frustrating for him because he wants to like hang out, but I'm getting there late at night and then leaving like first thing in the morning. So I like, say hi right before he goes to bed and then uh, be gone before he wakes up. Um, let's keep it rolling. All right, my little fella. This is my little fella. This is Elijah. He's very happy to be here. Um, so he was very, very tolerant. Tolerant is the right word. Uh, he, was, he was a good sport. You know, I got him out there on the beach and this is. This is the more fun side. Most of it was him sitting, waiting for me to find my bird or give up, uh, but I appreciate it, buddy. All right, one more. All right, and my parents, they're awesome. Yay. It's been great to talk about with Elijah. And um, if you noticed in the beginning, there's a, there's a picture of me, well, you probably didn't recognize me. I was very small. Uh, a picture of my mom looking through a scope with with me sitting in her backpack. I think what were you looking at? All this whisk, whistling ducks or something. And so it was great. You know, this is this has been one of the most rewarding hobbies uh, that I've had the uh, benefit of being a part of. Uh, and I have been thankful. Who knows if I'd have found it? Um, certainly not as young as I did. So yeah, that's all I got. Um, you just made a few questions. Absolutely. You still have a job? I do. Yeah. I mentioned my boss. He's on here. Answer one. Oh, one. Isn't that great? I was on first. Oh, yeah. It's full circle. I did get to be a first. I did get to be a first at the end of the day. It took me like four months ago. I got them. This is good. Where is the best taco bell? Oh my gosh. None of the ones in Charlotte. They're atrocious. Um, what is the best Taco Bell in Charlotte? Or sorry, in North Carolina. I really like it's actually funny. Uh, the one in Nags Head is fantastic. Uh, I, I've i never like, recognized uh, an employee of a fast food restaurant for being so awesome, but like, I've had like minor, you always have minor issues at Taco Bell, it's, but it's what they do about them. <laughs> That's, and he was great. I, I don't know his name. I wrote a review for him once on the back of the receipt. It was great. Next, I had Taco Bell. Stop there and say hi for me. Maybe. Any other questions? Yes. Yes, I do. I love birds. No, there were like a, that couple weeks of being really frustrated. But other than that, it was just pure fun. It was just great all, all, all along, even just driving. Uh, you're, you're excited the whole time driving somewhere to go see something. And, you know, then driving back, you're excited if you saw it. Or you're excited waiting for the next thing to pop up, you know, if you didn't see it, but it's, it's awesome. Um, you know, usually if you don't see something, there's somebody else to commiserate with. Uh, it's a, you know, a bunch of Twitchers all go after the same stuff. 363. <laughs> it is. Elijah did allude to that. I, I bet this is the record now. I, I, I'm like, um, try not to. Uh, I think David Fisher has like 340 something. Um, no, no. It, by this, yeah, I got one more bird in December. So that was the 362nd. Um, so yeah, at this point, safe for at least one year. <laughs> Oh. 
and most of the most of the things you've done all year. But you went my way. <laughs> Hi Simon. So so that Andrew. Oh no, sorry. So that the most social thing in 2020 that we were doing uh was getting together. Um most social thing would still be your wedding, sir. It was great. <laughs> great fun. I didn't even leave it to go chase a bird. And I will apologize if Simon's on here. I did leave his wedding to go chase a bird. <laughs> it was it was after to be fair, it was after the wedding and during the I thought I could sneak out at some point. Um, and stuck around for like two weeks afterwards. So she's full of that. Oh, yeah, that was not a speeding citation, which is maybe surprising to some folks. It was uh, Buxton, Cape Point, or Cape, yeah, Cape Point, where the lighthouse is. So you have that like fish cleaning station there. And then you have this gravel road that has over the years acquired more. You're not allowed to come in here signs with uh, out a four wheel drive vehicle. I was open to interpretation by my standards. Um, I, I'd seen a bunch of people park there all the time. You know, you go out, it's, it's, a, it's a nice like gravel road. It's better than most of the ones I drove down during the year. Um, and you just before you get to the beach, you just park the car. And I was just scooting out there. Uh, to go, you know, do like 30 minutes of birding or something before I had to get back to work. Cause I was work, working down there for a week and hoping Daniel Irons would turn up something rare for <laughs> Chase is smooching off somebody, but. Um, uh, the Western, Western part of the state. I talk about the Outer Banks a lot, um, but. But uh, how, how much did I go to the West? Um, honestly, I didn't go too far to the West. Um, it's probably just as far away as the Outer Banks in terms of driving to get all the way West. But people, people don't bird that area as much. Like there's not really any big population centers. Um, it's a lot of space. So there's surely like good stuff out there, um, but it's just harder to get on it, harder to refine it um, and just, you know, you, you look at the pockets where rarities are reported and they're, they're around popular places where people are. Um, there was that, uh, that Townsend Solitaire was one that popped up. Um, and I just, it was a one-off. Somebody reported it, got a photo and nobody reported it again. And I was like a six hour drive for me or something. Usually when I went to the mountains, so I, I just uh, pop up there wake up at like four o'clock in the morning, drive up and uh, hopefully see whatever I was trying to see and be back by lunchtime. Um, I did, I did. So that was nice. I can't remember, Jamie would be the one to ask about that. Um, sorry? Yes, yes, definitely. That was up on the parkway. Um, it was the same day we got the Red Cross bills. Um, some gap that I wasn't familiar with that Jamie was, and we went out and checked it out together. And um, yeah, it was just nice because that's, sorry? No, didn't get Golden Eagle. That was a sad one for me too. Oh, did I get Golden Eagle? No, I did not. It's very sad. Thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> that was one I was really hoping to see. Elijah. It's a good question. Um, what sorry? What is what is my favorite bird that I saw? Um, the the wedge tail cheer water. Uh, this has got to be it. That, that was just so stinking exciting, um, and it's just one of those things that you don't get very often. That was a first for the Atlantic Ocean, as at least some people define it, myself included. There's one like right up right around the Cape of Africa or something. Uh, but other than that, this was this was a first. Um, so that was just really cool. And getting to see people who are uh, like as experienced as, as Brian and Kate and Ed, like just lose their minds over a bird. It's that rare. Like, you know, you've got something special. <laughs> so, 
Yes. Uh, what car did I use? Um, I used my car, which is suboptimal, to say the least, for this kind of activity. Um, for those of you that don't know, I drive a Volkswagen GTI. It's a little hatchback sporty thing with wheels that are way too big for the car on it, and then shocks and springs that lower it even further. So it's it's I like it I like it and it, it performs amazingly um, I almost put a slide in here just for the car um, but I, I would wager that no other lowered Volkswagen GTI on 19s and eight inch wide wheels has traversed as many miles of grab of very poor gravel roads than mine I don't know. Uh, I, I didn't miss, I didn't miss anything. I can't remember if there were, were any, sorry, how many warblers did I see? And did I get all the, did I miss any? I don't think so, unless there was a rare one that showed up that I don't remember. Um, so I got, uh, that's not true. I just talked about one that I didn't get. I didn't get more. I didn't get Morning or Connecticut, um, but uh, I got the Kirt Kirtlands. That was one that I had to try really hard for. Several trips up to the mountains. Um, uh, I can't think of any others right now that I missed or that I should have gotten. Anyone think of one? Uh, any other questions? Yes. What kind of work do you do when you're not birding? Uh, it's like quasi data science type stuff. I get self conscious calling myself a data science scientist. It just sounds pretty like science. It sounds weird coming out of my mouth, but uh, it's that type of work. Um, and just, I, when I went to school, I I'd done service industry for a long time. So I wanted a job where I could sit in a cube and not talk to anybody. <laughs> and it's, it's fits the bill. Yes. Can't hear the question. He he's we had some so this picture of Elijah, he wants to mention that we had a really horrendous storm the night we camped there. And I was sitting awake terrified in the tent all night long. And he just slept right through it. It was, <laughs> it was great. I wish I could have done that. <laughs> I was gonna make a comment. I was uh, you were talking about the obsessive like the getting into it and I think it was the spring camp that we were on together. Yeah, was that last year? So I guess that was kind of in the beginning of the camp for the year. Yeah, yeah. So I was still kind of putzing around at that point. Like I had no intent, well, I had no intention of doing a big year, I had no intention of breaking any records for a big year. But honestly, like Jamie did. Uh, all I wanted to do was have my name up at the top. <laughs> I just wanted a screenshot. So like he's going there. I'm just trying to. I get up to like two away. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get up soon, and then I can like back down and like chill out. Um, and then you go off and get like ten more bursts. Oh, shucks. Um, and then by the time I finally caught up with them, it's like summertime, and I've already seen. Like, I've already come this far. I might as well go all the way. When you were out, it was funny because in the morning, I think you had gotten an alert, and you were like, I'm Oh yeah. And the day before, I think you slowing down. It was like rage. See me just like checking my phone over and over again. Yeah, that was bright colored sparrow. That was great. That was the only one I saw all year, too. So, well, thanks for an inspiring talk. I think you may have. Uh, Push some people in the room over the edge to, to come That's after great. you. But beyond the birds, I think this talk was a really good reminder of the importance of family and friends. And all this. That's really showing through. Well, yeah. Uh, I was going to say, in preparation for Matthew's talk that I heard he was doing, it, he mentioned the movie Big Year, and I was talking. I read the Big Year book, which is about the uh, 
1998 North American big year. That's to say the three guys in here, um, let's see, Al, uh, Greg, and uh, Sandy, make Matthew look the same. <laughs> 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 the very same. Did you think you're fit to add two islands? Yes. Matthew, you have So, anyway. This is in line. Okay, one piece of business. If you haven't signed in, we need to record your presence for uh, the facility. They need to report how many people use the place. So if you haven't done that, please do that. And then come again in January and we'll have a potluck and members' pictures, and we'll have a report from one of our graduate student grant recipients on. For research and so have a safe drive home. Yeah. <laughs>